High intensity focus ultrasound is the new strategy that is coming into play for treatment of prostate cancer. It's abbreviated HIFU. The company that makes this first off wants you to know that it has not been approved by the FDA for application in the United States. There are treatment centers, Canada, uh, Bermuda, Bahamas, uh, Mexico, and Argentina, and in a number of areas throughout Europe. What is it? How does it work? When we were kids, how many of us went outside on a sunny day with a magnifying glass and uh, took the sun's rays and set a piece of paper on fire or maybe etch your name in a piece of wood? Not unusual. We all know about this, right? This is the same basic principle. There's the sun, the magnifying glass. We focus this in a particular area. We create significant heat. Here, we don't have the sun. We have a transducer that produces electromechanical energy that's focused, just like the sun's rays are focused, in a particular area, and you have very high temperature. That is the essence of high-intensity focus ultrasound. But clearly, computer technology has given us, in a very compact way, the ability to do things that we couldn't even begin to think had to do. Here is the um, high food probe. And there's a transducer right here. And if you look at it, it's right there, blown up. And this transducer can then be directed by the computer in this system to apply heat to certain very minute areas. This looks very much like a prostate. It's the right size. And its internal structure is also similar. If you think about it, the prostate has a capsule. And on the outside of that capsule are the nerves and the arteries that innervate the sphincter, the shut-off valve, and the erection mechanism that allows people to be sexually confident. And on the inside, it has a channel that runs through it called the urethra. Uh, and then around it is the substance of the prostate. I call it adenoma. Let's call it meat. That's what it is. So here we have the meat of the line. Here's the urethra. And here's the capsule of the prostate. Well, first off, the criticism that was leveled against treatment of prostate cancer was we made people incontinent and impotent. Why? Because we took the whole prostate out. And the nerves, arteries, and veins that were adherent to the side were damaged in the process. And not only that, the shutoff valve is up here. That's the external sphincter. And the bladder's over here with the internal sphincter, or the internal shutoff mechanism. And you had to take this away. And then you put the bladder and the urethra together. And that's the reason that incontinence and erectile dysfunction are significant side effects of radical prostatectomy, removing the prostate. If you do it with a robot, if you do it through an open incision, you're still removing the prostate. The transducer is in the rectum, and it is treating areas in the prostate. Now, you're saying, well, here's the rectum. Why isn't that burning the wall of the rectum? We'll go back to the magnifying glass that you were focusing the sun rays. You could put your hand right in the middle of those rays, and as long as it wasn't where it was focused, it wasn't hot. Now, if you take a high-powered computer and you hook that up to this system, and you know how to run the machine, now you can direct these hot spots to wherever you choose to put them. And if you choose to treat all the meat in the prostate, you can move it around and you can do it. And this is so precise that you could provide a, a heat point here of close to 300 degrees and the outside of the prostate is cool. The outside of whatever system you're talking about is cool. So you could essentially 
eliminate all of the content inside this, quote, prostate, and you wouldn't do anything to the outside of the prostate. Quite an accomplishment. The computer here has given us this control over the uh, transducer that produces the energy that we call high-intensity focused ultrasound. Now, here's a patient who had total prostate ablation. This is a T1.5 Tesla MRI. The entire meat of the prostate is gone. The patient can urinate with good control and has retained sexual function. And is a relatively young person. If you look at this, this is high food, cryotherapy, radical prostatectomy, external beam radiation, and internal beam radiation known as brachytherapy. Here are essentially the cure rates of each one of these treatment strategies. If you select the patient correctly and you apply any one of these technologies, the cure rate is in the high 80s, a very low 90 percentage. And that's based on a five-year or a ten-year follow-up. Why would you select one over another? The minimally invasive treatments, and in particular, uh, high flu, has very low side effects of incontinence or erectile dysfunction. Why? Because it keeps the treatment inside the prostate and doesn't interact with the tissues outside it. If you happen to be interested in this therapy, how would this happen? You have to go out of the country. I've been uh, to one of the treatment centers and spent time in another soon. And I was in Cancun about six weeks ago. What a beautiful hospital. During the time I was there, nine patients were treated with high-intensity focused ultrasound. And some of those patients um, actually rode back to the hotel list. Let's just talk about the characteristics for what high food today is thought to be a good option. First, you have to have localized prostate cancer. Uh, PSA is relatively low. Uh, you want to have a low Gleason score. And like this line, <coughs> you want to have a relatively small prostate. What about focal therapy? And if we find, for instance, that there's a limited amount of cancer in the prostate, we now have more options. Mark Emberton is probably the leading expert in uh, focal therapy in the world. Um, Mark is a urologist. He works at uh, University College in London. We're going to treat the disease that's limited in the prostate, and we're going to leave the rest of the prostate alone. Mark uh, thought these were appropriate. You can read them. Instead of going after the whole prostate, if we can biopsy the prostate, image the prostate, find the index lesion, and more importantly know that the other part of the prostate through the very same techniques is not involved, then we can choose to treat the primary problem. We can do it by ablating half of the prostate, or we can do a focal ablation transducer for the high-intensity focus ultrasound, just delivering very pinpoint spots of energy that you can control with um, our current computer technology. At University College, they have increased their interest in uh, focal therapy. Clearly, it's an evolution. And I think that high school will be one of the dominant treatments.